Whether you're a solo developer or you're a developer within a team, are there benefits to having clean code? Does it make it more maintainable? What does it even look like? Is it just throwing it in the bath and you know scrubbing it down? How do you know when you've written clean code? I've recorded this episode ahead of time since I'm probably traveling back from Laracon right now and hopefully there's been some fantastic information and videos that have been put out since then. But today we're going to be reading Benefits of Writing Clean Maintainable Code by Jamie Peters. You can find Jamie's website, jamie-peters.co.uk. And then this article is on the jump24.co.uk site. So benefits of writing clean, maintainable code, Jamie Peters. I have been writing code now for close to 20 years, but for the vast majority of that, I never really paid much attention to how my code looked, how maintainable it was long term. I was only really interested in it if it worked and did what it was supposed to, but it was full of bad practices and I had a lot of bad habits. A few years ago, when I discovered the Laravel framework and started really getting into it, I started taking pride in the code I wrote, actually thinking about the code, how it looks, and how easy it is for someone else to maintain and being proud of the code I write, I always try to think of that infamous developer quote. Always code as if the person who ends up maintaining your code will be violent psychopath who knows where you live. Some of the techniques I try to remember when writing code is primarily to not just write code for a computer to understand. This is especially important for teams. You want the next person to pick up your code to know instantly what that code is doing. And remember, there's no character limit. If your variable name is 20 characters long, but accurately described, then what does it matter? If another person can look at a block of code and work out what it's doing, then you know you've got great, clean, and maintainable code. Why write cleaner code? So why should you write cleaner code, even if you're just code you're writing for yourself? Well, a few reasons. One, higher code quality. This is an obvious one. If you sat and thought about your code and keeping it as clean as possible, then automatically that code is a higher quality than it would have been had you just written the shortest amount of code to get the job done. Two, more readable. Again, another obvious side effect of writing clean code is that your code will be far more readable and easier for a human to understand, which means it's easier for the next person to start working in the same code base. Three, easier to maintain. If your code is now cleaner, easier to read, then it will be easier to understand what that code is doing. And then it is far easier to maintain with less risks involved with not understanding any side effects of editing a specific block. Self-documenting. Remember the days where it was encouraged to write huge doc blocks in your code describing what it does? If your code is readable and easy to follow, then you don't need them. Your code has become self-documenting. Easier to test. This is a bit more advanced, but if your code is well-structured and sticks to common conventions such as separation of concerns and single responsibility, then that code is then far easier to test in isolation, giving even more peace of mind about that block of code. Lastly, easier for new developers to understand. Bringing new developers into an existing established code base can be tricky, but if that code base sticks to common conventions and the code is clean, high quality, and easy to read slash understand, then it will be a lot easier and quicker for that new developer to get started, which means they will spend less time getting onboarded and more time working on your product. Simple techniques for writing cleaner code. So now we've covered why you should write clean code. The next step is to look at some simple techniques you can start using to try and help you make the change to start writing cleaner code. Stick to standards, conventions, and any guidelines in your team. This is a simple one. Stick to standards such as PSR 12 and stick to common conventions such as the standard file structure in a Laravel app. They exist for a reason, and the more you stick to them, the easier it is for you and others to work in your code base. There are some tools such as Laravel Pint, PHP CS Fixer, that can check and update your code so it follows PSR standards and can even be customized to follow your own team's coding guidelines. Use types. From a personal point of view, I'm pro strict types, which from writing PHP for 20 years isn't something that crosses most people's minds, but they make code so much easier to read, write, and maintain, and wherever possible, every class property, every method parameter, and method return type is fully and strictly typed, and coupled with layer stand slash PHP stand. And generic types, it just makes code so much more readable and clean, and for me, more enjoyable to write. 
Use descriptive names for variables and methods. This one is key for me, and one of the best things you can start doing to improve your code quality and also directly leads into self-documenting code mentioned above and is a very simple, quick change you can make to any code you write. Take the following example. On the left is some code I might have wrote in the past. You might look at it in a few weeks or months and wonder what a dollar sign U or dollar sign P is, especially if there's quite a chunk of logic in the middle compared to the code on the right, which is a lot more readable and understandable. So the left is dollar sign U, user find one, two, three, dollar sign P equals new plan. Uh, file true, dollar sign U start, dollar sign P, whereas the right, dollar sign user equals user find by id one two three plan new plan trial true user start to plan so uh, user instead of dollar sign u and plan instead of dollar sign p spacing another key one for me and one that jumps out for me in code reviews please give your code room to breathe put a line break between blocks of code just like a new paragraph in a book or an article it makes things so much easier to read again using the following example Apart from a line break before and after the if block the code hasn't changed but notice how much more readable the second example is turn early no else blocks start negative now you've started using descriptive names for your variables and methods and given your code a bit of breathing room, try to slightly rethink how you look at conditional block of code. It's three different techniques, but they all work well together. First, return early. If you're in a function and you can return early because the next block of code is skipped over or doesn't matter, then do it. This will often go hand in hand with avoiding else blocks. It's a tricky one to get your head around first, but if you're returning from your truthy block in your if statement, there's no need for the else block because you know if your code execution reached that block, then your conditional was falsy. And finally, start negative. Do the falsy checks first, any verification and validation, and then at the end of the method, you know everything checks out. In this first example that we see here, we first check that the user authored the post. If they did and the post is popular, they can't delete it. But if it isn't popular, they can delete it. Otherwise, if the user is an admin, they can delete it no matter what. In the refactor, uh, also with additional breathing room as mentioned above, we first check that the user is an admin, then just return true. We don't care about any other logic. Next, if the user didn't author the post, then return false. They can never delete that post. We don't care about any other checks, but if the user did author that post, then finally, just return whether the post is not popular, leading to the same logic as the first example, but over less number of lines, but more readable and less complex. Avoid single use temporary variables. There's little point in assigning a variable that's only ever going to be used once, even if it's well named, it just adds to the mental capacity needed to read and understand that code. So avoid them where possible. Any good IDE will highlight any single use variables to you and suggest to remove them. Indentation to a minimum. If you've got a lot of nested if blocks or nested loops, then your code can start to get very messy, especially with the indentation level. So it's one to look out for. I once saw it described as watching out for the flying V duck formation. I try not to go above two or three levels of indentation if I can avoid it. It's not always possible, but it's a good rule of thumb to have. Otherwise, your code might end up looking like this, like a flying V. As you can see, even without any actual logic, it just looks a mess. What brace is closing which block? Consider going through the techniques discussed above, early returns, no else blocks, maybe extract some of the more complex logic into its own method to make this method so much more readable and easy to maintain. Summary. In this blog, I've covered why you should write clean, maintainable, easy to read code, along with the benefits it brings and some very simple examples of changes you could make to start making your code better. There are lots more that I haven't covered, such as avoiding magic numbers or strings, hint, use enums and constants, extracting complex logic or conditionals into its own method, and employing the techniques above, early return, etc., which also helps with the single responsibility principle mentioned above and many more. One of the questions that I think comes up a lot when thinking, okay, I know all of these practices of how to write cleaner code or how I can write better code or how can I can make it more readable or maintainable. But a lot of these practices, and I think these are all great, I, I, I agree with them and I, I think I use or try to use much most of these where I can, a lot of them it's really hard to to learn as a new 
coder, as a new beginner, or even someone who's just hasn't been building within that particular language, whether that's PHP or a particular framework, whether that's Laravel or not. Of course, yes, you do have those standards such as like PSR 12, or you have things like Laravel Pint that make things easier for you. But one of the things I think makes things easier as a beginner to learn these things and just get better is yes, you have to practice. So building things just makes you better at writing code. We mentioned it several times on you know, learning driven development series. It's like the more you build something, even there's projects and you know, simple applications for demos that I've built five, six times before I even make the video. And all of a sudden I can make that video cleaner. I can make the code better because it's just kind of right into my head. Okay, I know this is what I need to do in this particular example. It doesn't mean that how I process and how I gaffled out an application is perfect or even <laughs> well advised, but the more you do it, the better you get at it. So I think practicing is one of them. But the second thing that I would say uh, when it takes to kind of you know, all these techniques that we read about, you know, how do we write cleaner code? Why do we actually do the things that this article talks about? You, the more you use other people's packages and the more you use you know, inventions within a framework and the more you uh, whether that's contributing to open source or maybe even just you know, following along with op open source issues and repos and prs and everything like that the better you get at this there's a bunch of packages that i use let's say filament for example where i understand why types are so important within a PHP package. And I know package development is completely different from like you writing your own code, but I kind of do this idea of, okay, if I am using someone else's code and if someone else is going to be my using my code in the future, whether that's just kind of painting it or maybe picking up where I've left off, how do I want them to you know, up and maintain this? And if you use packages that are like, hey, this is a really a joy to use. I know exactly what arguments this accepts and I know how this should look. And I think for me, not only using additional packages, but, but like Jamie mentioned here, I think I've gotten better at writing cleaner looking code at least and hopefully more maintainable code since I moved into Laravel because I have all of that kind of built into the framework where I know, oh, I'm not just going to create this random file in a lib directory and call that you know, something regarding what a model should be or a migration or name your pick. Whether that's just you know, directory conventions and file naming conventions is one thing, but it also just helps you focus on how you're actually scaffolding and building out an application. I take more time to think now of, okay, how does this look and how am I going, if I'm going to, uh, even if it's just me and I'm going to kind of jump back into the project three plus weeks later, will I be able to find what I'm doing? Naming convention starts with that, but the more you take other people's projects, the more you learn, the more you, you know, read, the more you observe, the more you kind of collect information from others, the better your projects start to become. And I think that's really what it comes down to as a developer. As you're learning to code, whether you're a developer of 10 plus years or a developer of one plus months, the better you get at just learning how to get better, it sounds a little cliche, but the better you get at learning how to write code faster and the better you get at just doing the thing of putting in repetitions of saying, okay, I'm just going to make this to-do app and I'm going to make it the same, but I'm just going to improve something different next week. I'm going to do that maybe three, four, five weeks. All of a sudden you have these ideas of, oh, this would be a cool little feature to add. Oh, I don't necessarily need to replicate all of this code in these five or six different files. I can, can add that as a component. All of a sudden you start to have these ideas that start to make sense, whether that's in PHP and Laravel or whether that's in any other programming language or framework. Repetition helps you make clean code. Hell, you have the practices if you're consistently kind of in information, consistently reading things, consistently using other people's packages, consistently reading documentation, you have the resources. It's putting into practice. So keep practicing, keep building, keep making, keep creating.